Good afternoon, guys, or good evening, wherever you are in the world today. Happy Friday. If you're seeing this, you made it through the week. So today, I want to kind of discuss a topic that's been somewhat going around, um, the R. Kelly situation. I you know I did not watch it. I really didn't have the desire to watch it. But <clears throat> there's a question that oh, I hear a lot of people going around saying or asking about these women um, in regards to why they wait 20 plus 30 some years to start talking about, you know, what R. Kelly done to them. And <clears throat> I want to speak from a victim's perspective. Because I was molested when I was a young girl, by the age of 9, 10, on up until I was like a teenager, by people that I knew, close people. And I carried that through all my teenage years, all my adult years, and I never told my mother that I had been touched. One, because I possibly, you know, I didn't feel like, you no, know, I felt like no one would believe me. And then I didn't want to get anybody in trouble. So I carried all this through my high school years. I never told anybody. And I finally told my mom that, you know, I was molested as a child. And even at that time, I was probably about maybe 30-something years old or maybe right at 30. And I still didn't tell her who. It wasn't until maybe I was 34, 35 before I actually told her who it was. And people, you know, we're quick to question things that we don't understand. We always want to question why someone does this or why do they not do this or why are they, you know, why did these women wait all these years to come out and say something? It's because of fear, embarrassment. Or thinking that, you know, this part of my life is going to go away. Now, why these women decide to go public with it and come out with it, you know, that's totally up to them. Because that that's the entertainment world. On the flip side of that, that's the entertainment world. More, more, more publicity, more money, whatever. And you make money off this biopic or whatever, whatever the name of it was. So, but... If these women are truly victims of, of, of being molested or raped or, you know, sexually assaulted, then we have to look at the fact that these women were hurt. So, I, I told a friend of mine, um, last night I was talking to a friend of mine about his daughters and I asked him, um, have you ever asked your daughters if they've been, has anybody ever touched them inappropriately? Um, has somebody done something? His daughters are grown now, married. Like my oldest daughter, she's grown and married. And I asked him, have you ever asked your daughters, has anybody ever touched them or done something to them growing up? And he told me, no, he's never thought to ask because they was always around family. They was never left alone with men. But I'm going to tell you guys, it matters not whether it's family or not you got fathers molesting and raping their own daughters inside of the household and the mother doesn't even know so it's not about i i never leave my daughters around because there's always a chance for anything to happen that's like when we was teenagers we wanted to sneak from out in the house we wanted to go have sex when we was teenagers we done it so there's a possibility for anything to happen to anybody so my thing i want to encouraged to you guys is even though your child your daughter your son might not tell you but at least show an interest in whether someone is sexually assaulting them or someone's molesting them or somebody's all out raping them we got to do better as parents by making sure we at least try to protect our children or we we teach our children how to get away from these type of predators because when I was growing up, you know, I didn't know no better. And this guy, this man that started messing with me, you know, I thought it was okay. You know, I didn't know any better. I'm like, oh, okay. But it caused 
me to develop this infuriating feeling toward men or I was afraid of men and then it caused me to just start being promiscuous. You know, here I am, a young child, 11 to 12 years old, dreaming about sex or I'm having sex in my dreams and I've never had sex before but it's because I was exposed to that spirit because a grown man was touching on me and messing around with me. So therefore, he transferred that spirit, and you have this young ten-year-old child talking about sex and and all this, and you wonder where they get it from. It's because maybe someone has touched them. So, as parents, and for these generations coming up, coming up under us, and for my age group, now we got grandkids that's coming. So we gotta instill in our grandkids, you know, how to identify someone that wants to hurt them if some if this person is hurting you or this person looks at you a certain way or this person is bouncing you bouncing you in their lap too much then you need to tell somebody or you need to just walk away or run away or just you know get away from the person so they won't possibly be left for something to happen to them so this R. Kelly situation, I, like I said, I haven't seen it. I don't care to see it, so I really can't speak on it. But all I can do is speak from a victim standpoint. Is when you're hurt, you don't know how to tell somebody. You know, I didn't know how to reveal anything that had happened to me or how, because I didn't know how. I just didn't know how to reveal it. I didn't know how to tell my mom. You know, this is what happened to me. And as a child, I was afraid to tell. I was afraid I was going to get in trouble for telling. I was afraid that I was going to get accused of lying. I was afraid that I was going to get this person in trouble. So I didn't say anything. But it traumatized me. And it caused me to make a lot of mistakes and have a lot of issues. Because when a, a young girl or a young boy is sexually assaulted, it messes with them. That travels with them. It, it goes with them all through life. And sometimes it doesn't manifest until that person becomes an adult or they to go into puberty. And then they start having all these sexual thoughts about other men, other women, or women, or women, or men, or men. And, and, and they're not understanding where this is coming from. Because it, that sexual demon... That attaches itself to a child at a young age through a molester or a raper, it it just messes that person up, and then they don't know how to go through life. They don't know how to shake it. They don't know how to drop it. So, let's not be so quick to judge someone that waits twenty or thirty years before they tell that someone done something to them, because you don't know the trauma that that person had to endure. Uh, the weight of what happened to them they carry it all these years like me i carried it for 10 15 20 years before i said something so guys you know let's do better i tell, i talk about this in my upcoming book you know confessions of a preacher's daughter and i talk about the molestation and i talk about how it messed with me and what it done to me and it goes back to what i said in my other video as young girls, you know, I wasn't really told that, I, you know, I was loved, I was pretty, I was this, I was that. But then here comes the molester. The molester, oh, you're pretty, Tamika, oh, your hair. It, molesters know how to get into little girls who have low self-esteem mind. They play and they, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? They feed off of that. Because they know they can get in this little girl's mind because, oh, yeah, okay, she, she's not really being paid attention to by her parents. So let me pay her some attention so I can get what I want from this little girl. So, so it goes back. We have to love on our children. Let's love on our grandchildren. Let's tell our children we love them. They're pretty. They're handsome. Let's teach and instill certain boundaries in our children so they'll know. So that's all I have, guys. I hope you guys have a good weekend, and I will see you guys again.